I don't have any interest in displaying my art in gallery or in a museum. I think uh, you need to go to the public directly. So when you put a sculpture in public place, automatically invite conversation. If you're working in a neighborhood, the neighborhood needs to be represented, the community at large. All of those things factor into what the actual piece of art is going to be about. I had to keep in mind that my public is going to be not um, probably accustomed to the artwork that um, you see in the gallery. I wanted to make it friendly uh, and appeal to kids. With all the change coming to Austin, this project really has an incredible opportunity to tell a larger story about these hyper-local and local experiences that Austinites are having and seeing the value that even the smallest park or neighborhood was having on them raising their children, on their life, on their experience as a homeowner. One of the goals of the art piece is to kind of have a high level of engagement with the community. So uh, instead of just having a public art piece stand in sort of defiance of an event that happened, uh, one thing that I wanted to do was have something that would become more of a landmark for an event. And so one of the events that we're planning is uh, Austin's first Pinata Day. It's an original piece of art commissioned by the city of Austin for art in public places. Uh, it's called a mission because it's the idea that an open piece of space is all of a sudden consumed and omitted by these large abstract white spheres. So one of the things that I really like about a mission is that it changes the way people interact with their common space. People always, you know, run around this park, they experience this park on a daily basis. And with the introduction of these white, white spheres, they're all of a sudden more involved in what this space is. They're realizing, you know, what are these white spheres? And they're, they're walking around in it the way, in a different way than they have before. It's changed up the way they perceive the, the park. First saw this place driving through 360. I kind of catched a glimpse of it. I saw the limestone beds and I saw the creek. It was just a glimpse, and then I started to see, like, how can I get to this place? What is this place? This is my first public art piece, and I'm very excited about it. So when I was making it, I was keeping uh, kids in mind. I wanted them to have a good feeling when they look at this uh, artwork. And I have two four-year-old girls, and so I had to consult with them about what kind of material they would prefer, and um, so they opted for the eyelashes, for the sparkles. After I did my MFA, I spent a year in Berlin, and I had a studio in the center of the city, and uh, I started making work about the space around my studio. And I had made this architectural folly, um, the skeletal structure that were the same dimensions as the ticket booth there. This piece is part of the XYZ Atlas, where we ask people questions about where they've had experiences in Austin. The sculptures are placed in public parks with quotes and questions from the survey, and people can either read quotes and questions on the sculpture, and hopefully it will engage their curiosity and they'll go to the website and participate in the project. Uh, what I liked about it was how these huge limestone beds just kind of served as everything, beds or tables or chairs, and all sorts of people just came together, and no one really cared about whether they know each other or not. So I thought that was a, like a natural sense of community, that, that, that this park and that these rocks kind of just created that. I've lived here on the east side for 10 years, so I've kind of wanted to just document what I've seen in the last 10 years, and it's about people leaving and people coming into the area, so I call it migration. So I'm really interested in the way the body moves, especially in relationship to another body or an imagined space or a physical space, if that is the context of the work. So that's kind of what, in a way, inspired me to create Born and Bread was the history of this particular building, uh, the old bakery and emporium, and the people that have been there, and the stories that are sort of living there right now, but in a way through the people that are there every day. Somehow it started with the idea of something floating in the sky right. at night yeah. that lit up. I think we were both attracted to the idea of like an illuminated canopy and during like the summer, warmer months, like looking up and being outside and kind of like the cool, almost like childhood experience that you get from like looking upward and just experiencing like something really beautiful above you and 
changings. Yeah, so then we came up with this idea of fiber optic cables that are formed into this shape in the sky. When I researched the site for Convict Hill and found out that it was the original quarry site for all of the limestone that's used in the Capitol building, um, I got really interested in, in that. They made a secondary railroad line directly from the Capitol to the quarry site, but they used mostly felon labor. And during the excavation of that site, eight convicts died and lost their lives for an institution that they had been imprisoned by. Um, there's a series of 20 spheres, about 10 foot in diameter each. Um, they'll be going from different parks and different configurations throughout till November, and the last one ending at November 14th and 15th for East. The original paintings were 24 inch by 24 inches and they were acrylic on canvas. And then those were scanned and blown up to seven foot by seven foot. And they were on this material called vinyl plastic wrap. So it doesn't sound very nice, but it looks really cool. <laughs> it sort of melts into the brick. With this piece, I do want people to touch it and, and, and if they want to sit on it or, or experience it, I definitely want that. And I went back two days later uh, to photograph my own work and I noticed that it was full of footsteps. Every single layer was full of footsteps. So I think that it's working. You know, whatever I wanted to to convey with that, it, it was there. With this piece, you know, simply taking the shape of large knots and made out of 32 oil barrels, representing all kind of corporate producing oil in the world. In order to reach the goal of reducing the earth temperature, you have to tie the knot on the petroleum production. My studio was in the former East, so I was thinking a lot about those stations that were closed down, the railroad stations, so that the East Germans couldn't escape to the West and it being like a larger scale prison. And thinking about, you know, these guys that were working in the quarry site as, you know, being outside in freedom, but in a larger prison. So that's how I kind of came up with the idea for this project to make this for another iteration of this project, a memorial to those convicts. The piece is an architectural folly that's then propped up on a limestone rock. But I had this project already kind of conceived beforehand, um, something that I wanted to do because of what happened with the Humpaline storm. The building was demolished with all their belongings inside. To me, it was kind of a very textbook kind of gentrification story where uh, the hurry in demolishing the project or the, the, the building didn't really use any uh, sensitivity to both the people that inhabited the building and the neighborhood around it. Who well, actually worked in the building and some concerned neighbors came, which actually worked out really good. They were a little hesitant, with good reason. And they made some suggestions which I took and uh, I think they were real appreciative that I took the time to listen to them. Melissa put a lot of time uh, on the color sequence and we, we worked with the interactivity aspects also so um, the sculpture is, is alike and I believe that really it doesn't look like just an electronic thing but more than a piece of art. And so I'm really happy with the outcome of this piece. It really feels integrated into the park. Let me underscore, when I do any kind of public art, there's always concerns. There's always people in the neighborhood who need to be addressed. And I welcome it because they have some good ideas. And sometimes I go down rabbit holes that I wouldn't have. Um, and I find myself painting things that I would never think to paint. It was just really wonderful. I got a really wonderful turnout and people were really generous and willing to share, you know, their history, stories of Austin, um, their passion, their hobbies, and so I kind of uh, wanted to highlight a lot of that. My artwork started as a way to change myself and then became records of my life as it changed and now are a way to engage people about change or their ideas about time and place and community.